All right, so now let's start with the class. Um, so JavaScript class looks like pretty much like a Java class. Uh, it does have some differences, and there are changes coming in. in. Uh, when I use uh, classes in React, it's very different, uh, which will be coming soon. But I'm um, just going to show you how, how it works in pure JavaScript. And again, the, uh, the classes are part of the um, ES6 version of JavaScript. So uh, if you want to use this, this type of classes, the one I'm showing, or the, the React kind of classes, you would have to use some sort of Babel or something, right? Um, and you have to configure. Classes are simple. So you, you use a class keyword. And then the name of the class, again, you can see it's capitalized, and then curly brackets. Okay, this is my class. Now, class should have a constructor. And what constructor does? Same thing. Remember, we had a constructor where it just sets this uh, dot legs into legs. So it does the same thing here. But here you have to uh, specifically say, constructor and you know let's say if I have a color then I would say color and here I would do the same thing this dot color equal to color okay so here as you, as you can see I'm having a constructor and method in a one class in the um, when I did it using the, the function constructors I had a con function constructor and then I had a prototype method strike right, two. Here I'm gonna put everything into one under one roof. Right? So here I can have a drive method. Right? Which would say console log, let's say driving. Now if I want to create a car from the uh, like a red car for example, so I would say red car equal to new car. And now yeah, we just put red here because it's a color. Now, if I look at this object that I created, uh, red car, let's see how it looks like. So I see the car. So instead of constructor, I see just a car. Okay, it has a prototype. As you can see, it doesn't have any anything inside here. Okay. And it has a class name car and you would see the constructor here. Hold on. Uh, well, constructor is right here. Well, let me close this. So I have this constructor um, and it has a function. There. It has, they are cha keep changing exactly what, why they are keep changing. There's a global. I don't. I have no idea. Uh, oh, did I misspell it? Oh yeah, that's why. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to have constructor. That's why. <laughs> the way my brain works is always misspells. I would never be an English teacher, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> okay, so now I have a color here. Because of that misspell, it thought it, it's, it's a method, some sort of method. <laughs> okay, so I have a, a color red, and I have a constructor, um, and then I have a drive method, right? But as you can see, it's inside the prototype, so it's a prototype method, right? So internally, it does the same thing. Now, let's do one thing, right? If I do car dot proto type dot a new method, or just let's say call it stop or something, and console log stopping, right? And if I do red car dot uh, stop, 
I think it should stop. I tried this last time. No, I made some mistake. Oh yeah. All right. So as you can see, it's stopping, and that is because I can add. <laughs> I can add methods like this even after I create a construct. So it's the same thing as, as you can see. It's a there is no difference between what I did before and this. Right? It just said this provides me with nice syntax that everybody understands from like a Java world. Right? And that's that's the main difference. Anybody has any questions on this so far? So internally, it's uh, creating into a function, Emin, the class card. No, it's not creating a new function. It creates, uh, it's sort of like a factory function. Um, what is a factory function? Factory function is basically, when I say new car, it actually creates um, a function that executes and that it, and that would create it would have a, a function constructor called car and it would have a drive prototype drive method right because I'm executing car so when I execute car it should have it should create because if I write this in a like a constructor way then I would do what? I would say const a car equal to a function, right? So this is my constructor. And then I would say uh, car dot prototype dot uh, drive equal to a function, right? Right? So when I say new car here, then it simply knows that this is a constructor and this is a method. In this case, it has to output, it It basically internally what it does, it, it wraps, have you guys heard of a, a thunk before? So basically what you need to do is just you wrap, you, you basically, you, you would have something like this. I can wrap the whole thing. Um, I can create another function called car, right? Here. And it's not exactly like this, but it would something like this. Um, so I would return um, I would immediately execute this function. Well, I would have a function first. And then I would do is I would say car um, I would have to immediately execute this function okay so what it does it returns me and it would return and then well like yeah and then it would return me this this back right so then I can say car dot this and that right so it is similar to that okay because when I execute car like this because it has a constructor it has to return me this object has to return me constructor plus the method right and then I have to execute it so when I run this it actually have to give me back a constructor and it has to execute the constructor so this has to execute the immediately invoke function that gives me the scope of this this car I had an example somewhere here that I had done. I'm trying to find it. 
trying to see where it was. Uh, let me see. Okay, okay, I have a. Okay, let me let me uh, let me give an example. So I would say let car equal to, and I will wrap the whole thing in a function. Okay, and then I would say. Um, let car equal to function and I would have some color uh, and I can say this dot color equal to color right so what happens when I so internal this is a constructor right so what, what happens when I do um, what happens when I as soon as I say car it execute this function right and it would give me what it returns me well I have to return the car here right so when I, as soon as I say car, it execute this function, and it would return me this this car, this this internal car, right? And so when I say when I say new, let's say when I do this, right? It's it's a bit complex. When I say new car, let's say when I haven't executed, if I just say new car, what it does is car means uh, this function because it's executed right away so this means internal car means it's just a constructor right and when I run with the red color then it runs a constructor Did everybody get this this is a little bit complex but <laughs> but this is how it internally works because it executes right away then it, it would expose the constructor and then I can do this way. So this this is really means this, but it's nicer way shown, right? All right. So we need to now. Let's say how do we do um, subclasses? So it's a similar way that we did last time, right? Um, let's let's look at the mammal example since we did that way, right? So I'm gonna create a, a, a class a mammal, right? Remember again, you just say class and then the class name. And in, in, internally, you would have to have constructor. And let's say if mammal should have what? Uh, legs and, well, I just have name, my legs only. And it would say this dot legs equal to legs right this is so I can it's readable because this is an internal verb okay and then you can have a walk method um, which in this case it would return uh, let's use a template string so it would say this dot well let's just add a name so we can understand this dot name equal to underscore name so this mammal has a name so I can say this um, so name and is 
walking with um, this dot legs. Something like this, right? So if I create a new mammal from this, I can say uh, let, I can say const um, new mammal equal to new mammal. And I would provide four legs. And let's call him John, right? So if I say new mammal dot, um, walk it should give me this oh i need to console log it because i Okay, so it says John is walking with four legs. All right, so now let's try to uh, create a subclass from. Remember, we created a bet. We're going to do the same thing here. So here, I don't have to do all the other shenanigans, right? Prototype and all that stuff. It, this is pretty simple. Uh, so I say class uh, bet extends mammal right now usually mammal which is a parent class if you don't put constructor it's fine it won't complain but the subclass you have to have a constructor remember because you are a subclass it's almost like you're violating that you're not inheriting your parents' property, right? So you have to have a constructor here. And I can say legs name. And I can have my own property here. Let's say eats meat or something. He's a vegetarian or not, right? Um, now, if I want to call, remember in the other one we we used to call something like this, right? We would do mammal dot call this, and then we would provide uh, legs name or something like that, right? Here we don't have to do all the kind of garbage. We just simply say super. Um, and I would say legs and name. So super basically would call mammals constructor, and it would whatever you pass here, legs and name, it would it would set for the bat. And then you have to explicitly set uh, this dot eats meat equal to eats. All right, so it's very simple. But under the hood, as I said, it does the same thing. Right, and you can have fly method, which is simply simple, right? Um, so I can say uh, return um, uh, let's do this template string. this dot name is flying so here I have to say a new bet and this would be bet and it's, this bet has four legs his name is John and and he is a vegetarian. 
or he eats meat, sorry, it's a non-vegetarian. So, so if I say uh, new bet dot um, fly, remember I'm not console logging here, so I have to console log outside. Then say John is flying. And I can call also walk method. And it said John is walking with four legs. Now I can, so so far clear, I think this should be very simple, right? Compared to the other example. Uh, any question on this before we move forward? And remember, like if, if you go for an interview, um, yes, you need to know this if you are using a framework. And you need to know what's going under the hood, right? Because you can actually add a prototype methods and all this here, which you cannot do it inside, um, inside Java classes. Um, so, and also if you go for an interview, you can, you will be asked this kind of questions because they want to know your fundamentals of JavaScript, even though you may not use something like this. Even classes, you, we use limited classes, right? And when you're using your React or Angular, we, we, we would just use, um, when we use a component, we just say component extend, um, um, my component extend component. So let me show you here. Remember we did this last last time we did my first app. Oh, I think I removed it. Open recent. I'm just gonna I edit this. So here, well, this is a with a TypeScript, but it should be the same thing, right? So here I can see class app extends react component so react it's actually a component it has it's a, it's a class li library of classes so only time you would use the class here it when you would say app extends react component right and as you can see there is no remember i told you you have to have constructor but there is no constructor here also, a component should have a render method in the app. So the React component inside it has a render method. Okay, but um, here I can override this render method. So we'll look at that in a minute. But the main thing to note is there is no constructor. However, if I and now what I wanted to show you is that, why is that, right? So if I remove the constructor from here, let's say, and if I run this, uh, hold on, let me run this again. John is walking with four legs. No, I don't want to walk. Because when it extends, it automatically gets this, right? Uh, Or maybe they change it because before I used to do this. Maybe they they changed it. Okay, maybe you don't have to have a constructor now, because because what happened the 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 Chrome constantly changing the versions, and before if I don't have um, the constructor here, then it would complain that you know you have to have a constructor. But in React, you don't. In React, also it used to be the same way. But now they, uh, they basically said, okay, why do we have to have a constructor? We already know that you're going to do something like this, right? So, whatever the methods you have, whatever the properties you have, legs and name, you're going to do the super 
right? So unless you want to have your own uh, property, which you can actually do outside. So now actually what, I don't know if it's this is gonna work, but now you can do here, um, in React, you can do const eat, I oh, well not const, sorry, this dot eats meat equal to something like this. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, it's probably not gonna work here. But in React, you can do that. So that's probably not there yet. So this is directly saying inside that, okay, I can do this. Um, yeah, so this is this is constantly changing because I think Angular uh, started it where you don't have the constructor. You can just put the properties directly inside and all of that, right? So now it's changing. Otherwise, you would have, you know, I would have gotten a complaint if I didn't move the constructor. All right, so net, now let's look at if I want to override a method. So I have a walk method here, right? I want to override it here. So by default, when I do extend, I'm automatically getting the walk method. So how do I override this? All I have to do is just have my own method here. And I can say, uh, <clears throat> so let's say if I'm, if I'm a meat eater, right? So if I'm a meat eater, then I would be eating some sort of meat. Otherwise I'll be eating some sort of vegetable, right? So let's say holding equal to if this dot eats meat, then I would say uh, bug, or I would say carrot. And then I would add, so remember this walk method is return this dot name is walking with this dot legs, right? So if I want to call this, all I have to do from inside is I would say this dot, oh, sorry, um, let's just do return. Return, and I can call this method from the parent. All I have to do is uh, uh, super. So when I say super, means my parent, and walk, Right, it will call this method, and then I can say with a, and I will just say holding, which is this guy. So if it's going to be meat eater, then it's going to be holding bug or carrot, right? All right, so now if, if I run this, let's see what it gets. Oh, did I do hold? Okay, so John is walking with four legs with a bug, right? Because so now you don't have to really rewrite the whole this here. We just simply call the the parents walk method, and you would just say with, and you can append your own here. So if I do, let's say, false here, then it should say carrot, right? And then John is walking with four legs with a with a carrot. All right, everybody got this? Are you guys are awfully quiet? <laughs> Hopefully you got some some knowledge. <laughs> We got it, Kamil. All right. I just want to make sure you guys are not sleeping or anything. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, so 
it's this is pretty simple if you if you think of it right it's the the syntax is pretty simple compared to the other one where you have to do a lot of work but i think it's important to know both of them at least if you understand the example that that i presented last you know with with the prototype methods and all that stuff um that should be sufficient to know the inheritance in in uh, es5 and this is es6 okay hopefully you never have to use the one with the regular constructor though you might use constructor somewhere but not as often as you should or not as often no, no, I, should, I should not say uh, as you should right all right so <clears throat> Okay. Um, oh yeah, another thing you, I wanted to say is that this here. Uh, see, I did this way. If I don't have, um, I can simply do. Um, if I'm not, let's say, if I'm not inheriting anything here. Then I can simply do this also. I can use a, a spread operator, right? And I can have a method that sets some property if you want to, right? So this is important to know. Um, what else? Mm. Yeah, so pretty much, uh, let's see if there's anything else I missed here. I think that's about it. Okay, there might be one more thing. Let me see. Okay, yeah, that's that's about. It. Let's let's move to composition. Oh, well, okay, sorry. Before we move to composition, well, there's one more thing you need to know. Uh, it's called static methods, uh, which you can have in in the class. Do every, everybody knows what static method is? Uh, something that cannot be instantiated with the class and we need to use dot notation to run the method yeah so fly method is you know um, you have to say you know the object name dot walk right and that's my fly method uh, but often time there 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 might be some some methods that you need that works on the class not the object here the the walk method works on an object right which is a new bet but there might be some method that you want to work on the on the class but why would you want to have a method on a class right uh, well let's look at an example so let's say you have a uh, uh, class car Okay, and I can have um, a method. So if I want to have a static method, first of all, I have to do static. And then uh, let's say if I will say compare price. And if I do console log this what would happen here let's do const new car equal to new car and if I say so now if I want to run the static method I'm not gonna run in a new car I can run it on 
compare price. Okay, I'm running on the class itself. So here, this means class. Right, if I had a method here, which is a prototype method, then if I say this, it would be an object. So that's the main difference. Uh, now, why would you ever want to have a static method? So, as I said, if I have two cars, right, um, and I want to compare um, prices of two cars. So static method, you can provide the objects inside. All right, so uh, this is how you do it. So you have to create, first of all, let's do this. Um, I would need to have here some price since I'm comparing the price I would have to have a constructor remember um, well you you don't really need a constructor in the in the parent class oh, nowadays you don't even need constructor even the subclasses as you, as you can see but uh, let's add a constructor and have a price um, so here I can say this dot color equal to color and this dot price equal to price. Okay. So now this car has two properties, color and price. So if I create a new car, I'm gonna create a red car and let's say red car should have obviously that color and the price should be let's say fifty dollars okay it's a really cheap toy car <laughs> and I can have green car which is green and it has it's 20 bucks because the red cars are always expensive Okay, so now what I, I I created two objects, one with the red card, one with the green. One one is a green card. Okay, they both have this um, property, price and color, right? Now, let's say I want to compare the prices of these two cars. So the, what I would do is I would say car dot compare prices and I can pass this to red car and green car, right? Um, and then what I'll do is um, here I have to have some sort of logic inside the compare prices. So what logic I can have? So it has two objects, right? Car one car two and I can say return math dot absolute and then I'm just gonna say car one dot price minus car two dot price Just say console log here. So let's see if it works. Uh, da, 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 yeah, it should. Okay, so it gives me thirty. So, I mean, why? More question would be okay. Why would I? I can do the same thing externally, right? Yes, you could do the same thing externally, but. This way, it's part of the class, so um, it's available in 
as a part of the package all the functionality right um, that's why static method they don't work on object they work on a class and so you can say class dot so just when you have a full package of things you should put all the static methods as well obviously I can write a method right I can write outside I can say I can have a function here right let's say const uh, the same thing um, right something like this and it would work fine but this way all the functionality is part of the car okay so user know how to use them you know they don't have to write their own methods like this so these are static methods um, one thing I wanted to show you how does a static method looks like inside the car so if I just look at the car now well let's just do the DIR so remember the the other method uh, if I have like a get color or some method there will be a, like a prototype method but here the compare price method is actually part of the car so that's the main difference so it doesn't get inherited okay all right any more questions cool all right so let's move to okay it's nine six okay uh, okay let's let's keep going um, I wanted to cover some CSS as well today but I feel like uh, let's do it so we started nine eight thirty eight so um, probably last hour or so we will cover it I wanted to cover uh, Z index and uh, I wanted to get started on SAS. Uh, let's take a five minute break. I just need to get some water. And uh, so we'll be back at, let's say it's 947 right now. So just exactly five minutes after, okay?
All right, guys. Uh, everybody there? Yep. Okay, let's just wait for Indra. Okay. So, by the way, do you guys uh, understood the the homework for for last year? Last uh, last time, not last year. <laughs> yes, I, mean, I submitted to JS Fiddle, but I didn't. I I didn't start the React app yet. I okay. think I'll do it this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's 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 try to do that so that you know, uh, since we also covered the classes this time you would at least understood a little bit more. Um, and uh, also practice on the both, at least, and I, I would say, you know, create an area, like I would create uh, like a Google Doc where I would collect all the examples. So um, f for example, the, the, the mammal example I showed you, right, with the, the constructor. Um, I think all you need to do is remember that uh, for, let's say if you go for an interview or something, right? Because you won't find that kind of information on the web. I had to kind of dig a lot of things to find out. I know one, one uh, place I, I found, but it was quite incomplete and it, uh, the explanation was quite bad. Um, I'm really surprised that, you know, JavaScript being this um, popular, that there's just lack of documentation and people just doing all kind of different stuff, but there's not a coherent documentation anywhere, uh, which is very surprising. But I would suggest, you know, have it for your own reference so that what happens is that, and I'll provide, if you, if you want, I'll just, I'll create JS fiddles for it and I'll can, Submit it in your. I'll put it in the classroom so you can use it and then just save it for yourself. And uh, when you go for an interview, just just go through those examples just to refresh. Since you don't use this day to day life, um, you know, you can refresh it and then you you can answer those questions. And believe me, you know, for JavaScript interview, you know, if you can. They they're gonna be mostly if they don't ask you from the any frameworks, um, then they would probably ask you from all of this, you know, because there's not much. So if you, they will ask you from the inheritance, what's the difference between a classical inheritance and a prototypical inheritance, right? Now, the answer of that is you can answer many different ways, right? Because there are so many different things that you can say. Uh, for example, um, when you create objects from a classical inheritance, classical in inheritance means, you know, Java kind of inheritance. Um, all the methods are inside your objects. In a prototypical inheritance, your objects are kind of that doesn't have any many methods. They may have static methods, uh, but they don't have much met not many methods. So they have to get the methods from the prototype reference, right? So that's a main difference. In a classical inheritance, once you define a class, you cannot add any more methods. Here I can take this class and I can say car dot uh, proto um, type dot new method right uh, equal to something so I can add after the fact which you cannot do in a classical inheritance um, in the classical inheritance you can have private methods in prototype inheritance or at least a JavaScript kind of prototype inheritance. All the methods are public. Okay. Um, 
if you want a private method so you can there are ways to create private method we're not going to go into it because usually people won't ask you that uh, but it's not it's not like standard you have to do some hack to create one um, what else uh, yeah if you can explain this much I think then interviewed would know that that's the that's that should be enough okay so any question on this we before we move to composition and then we'll do some CSS work all right so let's move to composition so inheritance means you you have a, a, a parent object and then you a parent class and you create subclasses from it right and it it has a simple inheritance tree. You you inherit everything from your parent. In the real life, it doesn't work that very well. Um, so we need some sort of way to actually build your object using multiple parents, and basically it's called com composing object. With have you uh, in I don't know if in uh, in Canada you have this but we have this uh, ice cream parlor called uh, ben, not Ben and Jerry or something there is a one ice cream uh, parlor what where, where you just go there and then there they have a bunch of toppings and then you just say oh can I have some ice cream and then you pick a vanilla or chocolate whatever and then what and then you pick the toppings and then what they do is, is they mush the toppings in the, I forgot the name of the place. And then they make your customized ice cream. So composition is kind of like that. Um, you get what you want based on different things. Okay. Um, so for composition, we need to borrow things right now let's look at um, one example uh, this is a simple composition and we we're just going to use object literals here so i can have uh, let's say const uh, toyota which is an object Again, this is not class, but I just want to show you a simple way of how the composition works, right? And I have a, some drive method, right? And it would say return uh, driving Toyota. Now let's create another object, const Camry equal to so same thing and the Camry has some it's a new Camry so it equipped with Wi-Fi and it returns using Wi-Fi I should not All right. Now, I want to method of Camry. Um, I want this method into Toyota's method into Camry, but I only want. Well, let's say I want every method. So how do I? How would I do that? Remember the object assign. So simple way to do it is you just say object dot assign, and you take Camry, and I say okay, and then I want 
uh, Toyota. What it does, it basically takes a Toyota's methods and it copies into Camry. Right? Or I can say, so now let's let's look at it. So Camry. Okay, so it has two methods now. So this is a simple way of looking things, you know, how how things work. All right. Um, object assign also you can do where you can copy up. So I can actually have, I can create an empty object. And I can say const my new car, right? So what does this mean? It's basically I'm, I'm copying Camrys and Toyota's both methods into this empty object and it building this new object called my new car. And it would be the same thing. If I run this, oh, I should say my new car. And it has both, right? So this is a simple example of um, inheritance. Oh, not inheritance, composition. Now, <clears throat> remember in constructor we used to use, the another use of uh, object design is, uh, it's pretty simple. Remember we used to use, uh, let's say you have um, const car equal to we would have function and we would pass let's say color right what if we have like three different four different properties right then what we have to do we have to say this dot color equal to color and then I have to say this dot a equal to a right and subsequently for B and C and D. Well, we don't want to do that. We can simply say object dot assign uh, this because we are saving everything to this. And I can simply say um, color A, B, and C, and D. This does the same thing. That's uh, GN, actually. Got it. So it's on one line. I'm just doing this dot A equal to A, this dot B equal to. All right. So object assign, it helps you basically copy um, all these objects and their properties, right? Um, so I just wanted to introduce that before we can move on to um, something more composition -y style. Okay. Um, now let's look at a different example. So Let's say uh, I'm trying to think of a good example here. Okay, so let's say you have um, fly. Let's say you have 
uh, some sort of library of functions. I would say flying capability or something. I'll just say flying stuff. It means using this capability you can fly. So you, let's say if I want to build a Superman, right? Then what I have to do is um, if I if I take an inheritance path, now Superman is not is is a kind of like a human, but he's also an alien, right? So if I take a re, like inheritance approach, it doesn't really work because he has human abilities and he also can fly. So instead of creating um, human class and somehow I have to figure out how to actually add the flying ability, I can simply create a library of flying ability, right? So I can say, uh, this guy can fly, can fly or something, or flying. Okay, and he can also, if he can fly, he can land also. Right? Now he can have also some human abilities. So I can say human stuff where he can eat. right and he can feel I guess Superman should be able to feel otherwise he will just go crazy okay now now let's create a constructor right I can say, remember we had the constructor. Um, I can say, um, or let, let's just create a class. Class flying man, right? And it has, it has nothing, let's say, it's empty, okay. Um, I can actually have, I can mix human ability and flying ability here. So I can say uh, object dot assign where, where do I want to set this in a flying man, right? Dot proto Type. Remember, in a class, you can set properties into prototype, right? So I can say flying stuff. So now this flying man can fly. And I can also add human stuff. Now I can actually if I want to build, a, so now I can build, um, let's say, Superman from it. So I can say, um, const Superman equal to new flying man, right? And he would have both flying ability and abilities and human abilities. Anybody got this? So this is called composition. There's more to it, but pretty much I can I can build whatever I want. Uh, well, I say Superman. <laughs> so if I say Superman dot 
fly and run this it's flying and I can superman dot feel it's feeling as you can see this class doesn't have anything I'm just composing it using different different kind of things if I want to have um, want to build Aquaman for example then I can have I can have another thing called water stuff and he can swim okay and I don't need a flying ability in that case I can simply say human stuff add some swimming stuff and then you have an Aquaman so it's pretty this is this is this is how pretty much you should do in JavaScript ra rather than using just regular classes this is how you should do because um, you get so much flexibility even from here you can pick you know do you want only flying or only landing you know you don't have to have everything um, okay uh, okay so remember we did a constructor do you guys know what a factory is Uh, it's something, it's a class that has methods and properties that we could use in other classes. Uh, basically, uh, remember, a class is, we have to say class new, right? Uh, think of a factory, what the factory does in a, in a conceptual way. A factory is something where you produce goods, right? And you have some sort of formula that you just keep producing the same thing over and over right uh, with different configuration if you want so one way to create new object remember we did the, the um, class let's say you have a car right and you can say uh, const new car equal to new car so this is called uh, using constructor. So and I can I can create multiple cars like this, right? One and two. Now, factory. Uh, it doesn't use a constructor. What it uses is similar. So I can have const car equal to. Let me comment that out. Um, it's a function. Okay. And inside, let's say if I pass color here, right? So instead of using new, I can do something like this. I can say uh, return object dot assign I can take an ob empty object and I can simply add uh, color equal to color right and what would I get here it's the same thing now if I say um, let's say const red car equal to I don't have to use new right so let's see what happens here if I say red here um, so this is a factory function so when I pass red it takes red and it it creates an empty object and it assigns this color equal to color right so if I say console log 
red car. Yeah. I would get color equal to red, right? <coughs> So this is called factory, and I can also set the uh, methods here and everything, right? As we, as we saw, I can have, uh, just like we did the Superman, we can build, we can have different object passing here. I can pass, you know, flying or whatever, right? And I can assign it inside, and I, I can create another object here. So this is using composition because it's so flexible that I don't need this rigid model of uh, of inheritance. Right? Um, and this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's um, most of the time you want to you want to think your problem and it use you, you want to solve it using composition rather than inheritance because if you use inheritance then you would uh you would it won't be so flexible later on if you want to add something or remove something or if your requirement changes composition won't allow you allow that flexibility right so um if I want to create an Aquaman, I cannot really create Aquaman because now I, my, my inheritance model doesn't support that kind of, you know, because my inheritance means that I have a one parent and I'm inheriting all the properties from it. And then this subclass would have another subclass, you know. And so um, always think of composition. And not a lot of times, you know, um, when you try to solve JavaScript problem, you wanna you wanna use um, composition model. Okay. Any questions? All right. So um, <clears throat> uh, let's see what else can we do. Let's look one example for how to do Okay, let's look at one example using composition and then we'll then we'll move to CSS. Okay, so let's create a again remember we said const let's say you have fly factory. equal to a function and you're passing some sort of object and <clears throat> you can use also you know here you can use also closures did I did I teach you closures by the way no no okay uh, you know what? Then in that case, let's just uh, let let just do do this anyway, and then when I use when I use closures, you know. All right. So let's say if I have a um, variable, <clears throat> excuse me. I might um, since I'm a little sick, my throat is constantly getting dry. All right. So what is what this function is doing is it will take um, uh, some sort of object and it would return you uh, object or assign. It would create an empty object, and then because it's a fly factory, remember we did the fly function. This is a better way to do it. 
you take the object that you passed in and then you add some methods called fly okay and here I can say is uh, flying equal to true because you're flying right um, and I can say return this okay and if I want to say is flying then I can say return is flying which is this variable and it's using closure which since I've, I've uncovered I'll I'll explain you later more more detail but let's just do this right so now let's so the, the previous example of flying and human is more simpler so that you understand it right now this is more practical example let's do same thing with a human factory where I would say uh, this would be human factory it also takes the object and since it's a human it doesn't fly but it can fly. so it has a, a variable called crying so the note is the thing is is crying is false initially until I call this cry method it won't make it true all right and then I would have is crying method which simply returns if it's crying or not so I have two factories now if I want to build a Superman let's build a Superman what I would do is I would first take a fly factory fly factory and I'm just gonna pass an empty object so let's look at this fly factory if I pass an ob empty object what would happen it would take an empty object copy another empty object which doesn't do you just, you just get the empty object and then it would add this to two methods fly and is flying and it would it would hold this is flying as a closure again I haven't taught you the closure but basically it, 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 it holds a variable inside it preserves it okay so when I do this Superman has a feature of flying and it has this so this think of this as a property is flying and fly is a method right um, I'm not using prototype or anything because you don't need to because you're using composition right now um, if I console log Superman what would I get let's look at it small f in online 33 Uh, this guy the name of yep oh sorry name of my factory oh is it smaller oh yeah sorry as I say if I was an English teacher I would really be bad English teacher <laughs> oh I need to okay what's object assign I I think my finger works faster than than I think sometimes so I always do a double s i n g I don't know why oh, somewhere else also uh, hold on uh, maybe 
did I use it somewhere else? Oh, here also. Okay. So I have two I have an object with two methods inside fly and is flying. So where is the property? Well, it should be inside. As I said, this is a closure. So closure would hold the the property inside. It's called is flying equal to false. And it would hold inside both of these. Again, since I haven't taught you this. Okay, we'll we'll look at it in next time but just think of this way so you have two methods fly and flying and it has a closure call is flying right now if I can so right now both are false right so if I say dot fly now if I look at the closure inside yeah, now it became became true right because now I can actually chain this. So now it's fly and it's flying. Oh, do I don't have it flying here somewhere? Oh, actually, it's it's is flying. Okay, so now it's true. Do you guys know how chaining works? So I did fly dot flying. Okay, so now this my Superman can fly, but I also want him to be human. Any idea how do I make him human? I have this human factor here. Remember, and the concept of factory is you pass some object, which is here, and then inside, it builds another object, a new object, and then returns something. So now, remember, when I do fly factory, I get this object, which has fly method, and is flying, and it has a, a variable called is flying, right? All I have to do is wrap around human factory like this so what happens now is my human factory gets this object which has fly method and is flying and it has a closure call is flying now I get two more abilities so now if I look at Superman, what would I get? Let's look at it. All right, as you can see, I have cry, fly, is crying, is flying. And where's the property? So each would have a scope. Cry has a crying. And fly is flying. But they are both false right now because in order for make it to make it true, I have to call the um, fly and cry. So if I do Superman dot fly and cry at the same time, and then see if it's is. crying then you would you would get it true and is the flying and get it true so this is called composition it's a little bit tricky 
as you can see. But conceptually, it's very simple. You need to understand how the closures work, but conceptually, it's very, very simple. Okay. All right. So that's about it for JavaScript. Let's move to CSS. And I wanted to cover this heavy subject, and there are a few more things left, but we'll, we'll cover next time. Um, because we are, this is more advanced stuff, and um, practice it. Build a small project using this. Now you can you can use if you use React, you can use all of these functions, right? Because uh, it will allow you to mix and match things. All right. Um, any questions? If you guys are not sleeping. <laughs> uh, can you see if this uh, for the uh, hello? Yeah. What about? Can you see this for the uh, certain classroom? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm recording it, so I will save it. Yes. I'm recording it, so I'll save it. And I have all the previous tutorials. I think except the very first one, I have all the tutorials saved. Um, videos, I mean. And uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll provide all the JS fiddles as well in that so that you can look at it. Um, yeah, but I think uh, it's very powerful, this composition. That could be a one question in, in an interview, right? Describe what are the differences between inheritance and composition, right? And this is how you can explain it, right? Um, one problem with, as you can see, with the composition is my Superman would have all four methods inside. It's not a prototype method, right? So that's one thing. Um, though you can actually, you can actually, because it's I'm using closure. I'm so you can do two ways. You can use closures, and when you use closures, you have to use like this kind of methods, right? But you can use like a prototype methods here also, if you want to. Um, that's the second way of doing it. Uh, but overall composition is very flexible and you can always explain like this right now this Superman can fly and it has human f abilities of crying and let's say in future you want to build a Superman robot who's made of steel well usually Superman is made of steel but let's say now this guy is actually a robot right uh, so he doesn't have to breathe. How would you do it? Right? You have to change your class. Instead, you just create a robot factory, and you can have some functions, and you can add it. Inheritance model, you cannot simply divert your direction um, without sacrificing something. So that is the huge difference. OK. All right. So. Let's move to CSS. So I want to cover first. So last uh, few times we did like a display property, position property, um, um, and a lot of the other, uh, and this, the CSS selectors and all that stuff, right? So one of the important property we're still missing, which is called Z index. Um, how many of you know Z index? Uh, it's the property that allows us placing of elements. It controls what appears on top of one another. Uh, yes. So if you want to understand fundamentally, yeah, which is a, the 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 exam the answer is right, um, but. You need to understand, remember last time we looked at the position property, right? Um, so Z-index works hands in hand with 
position property. Okay, so let's look at the position and um, do you guys know how many position properties, how many different types of positions we can have? The major ones. All right, so I'll tell you. Uh, position, you have, by default, it's position is static, right? So you have a, a static. Then you would have I think Sesha went offline for some reason. Um, Say it again. Absolute relative. Yes. So, oh. yeah, st absolute relative, um, sticky, right? Fixed. You can have uh, sticky, you have fixed. Right. Um, so, what was? Do you remember what was the difference between static and all this for? And then there are other ones like uh, inherit and whatnot. But that's not very important. Th this, if you look at between these two classes of position, what are the difference between static and all this? All four of these. So the difference, the main difference is that you can actually go off with the statics. Let's say if you have a bunch of kids, yours, you in, in a classroom, you, you, you want them to place in a sequential order, right? So you have one row and then you, you have a second row and third row and all that stuff, right? Um, now one of the kid, it's... Um, it's coming in late, but you want to also put him in the front. You have to create another layer, almost like another floor, right? Where you want to place him. So he can be the first position on the top of the first, first guy, right? Uh, but it will be on a, on a second level, second floor. So if I look at from the top, I would see the one I placed first. So these, these things are called positioned element because I'm intentionally positioned. Okay, this is not a positioned element. This is an international flow, flow right? Not position. So you need to remember these two things, right? So I'm forcing it to position at a specific place because I have to use that right, left, top, and bottom. Here, I don't use that, right? Um, so when I have a positioned element, then the Z index come in the picture because what if I have two positioned elements, right? Um, who would show first? All right. So let's look at an example. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna have here, I need HTML, I don't need JavaScript anymore. All right, so let's say if I have a div with class A, and it has, it says A here. And then I have a div with class B. It says B here, and I have a div with class C, which says C. If I run this, I will get A, B, and C because they are display block and position static, right? By default. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say uh, a dot b and dot c. <clears throat> they have some fixed um, width. Let's make it 40 pixels. And height is also 40 pixels. Right? And um, let's make them all position absolute. Just gonna do one line so that I have some more space here. All right. Oh, they all are kind of jumbo. I can't see which one is which now. All right. So what I need to do is I need to color them so I can I can see them. So I have a. Let's put uh, background color to be red. And I have B, which is, let's say, yellow. And I have C, which is green, let's say. So now, so first rule. So I have three positioned element because they are not static anymore. They are all absolute, right? Um, why is it not taking the pixels? Oh, because of this. I can only see the last one. When I have all three position element, the last, it will then follow the flow of, in the order they are received, right? Um, so I have A, B, and C. Let's say if I have D here. And my D is, it has same, uh, it has same width and height. And it has background color. Let's say black. Okay. I'm just going to call it D, right? But I don't see D, even though it's, it's the last one. I only see, because this is not a position. So the difference between position and non-position. So in 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 the terms of which one displays, uh, all the non-position would be always on the bottom. So everything that is a static will always be on the bottom, right? So D is always on the bottom, regardless of where it is in the flow. When it comes to the position element, whichever came last, which is C, is being displayed because C is green here, right? If I make this guy D position absolute, then suddenly he will be displayed, right? Because now in the flow, it became a position element and now he is coming last right but I'm, I don't want that okay so now the green is but now the thing is in this case I want to show B first and then C and then A in that case I have to use Z index now what is the value of z-index? Does anybody know um, what kind of value that, what type of value should we should we use in z-index? Integer. Integers. So z-index is nothing but 
um, is supposed to be uh, integer, which could be, which could include zero, positive, full value, also negative, right? But remember, you cannot use floating points. So if you use floating points, it would completely ignore. Okay. Okay. So let's add Z index. Let's say I want to show B first. So by default, what is a default value of Z index? Anybody knows? Now let's look at it. So if I do this guy, Z index, it's called auto. So by default, it's it's auto. What is auto really means? Means let the flow decide uh, what the who comes first. It's almost like static kind of thing, right? Um, whichever is last has a higher priority. I can change that. It's almost like, think of this as a zero, means all three has zero Z index. Now let's see if I add Z index of B to be, let's say one. If I do this, it becomes yellow. Now A and C are auto. D we don't have to worry about because it's a static position. So it's not a position element. Right, so we just have to worry about all three, and then from three, I have position B on a higher level by changing its index. Okay, what if I do this? I'll make it two, then I have two, one, and auto. Auto is almost like zero, right. What if I do minus two, minus one? Now the green. So remember, green is auto is almost like zero. So zero minus one minus two. So in this order, it would be okay. Uh, if I want to see it, I would just simply just say. Um, left five pixel ten pixel fifteen pixel well I just remove D here I think that the yellow color is okay, not showing because it kind of mix it, mixing it up. Oh, you know what? That is very interesting. Because I did minus, so let's look at it. C is zero, then coming actually because of this it's almost treating like a zero if I do this um, let's say one oh, one two and zero I don't see the the black behind let's say if I do all minus 
let me also do this um, left 15 pixel. Well, I only have 15 pixel. Uh, Z index equal to 3. What if I make them all minuses? then the black shows up, right? Because black is kind of zero, but it's still lower than all the position element. But if I make them all minuses, then black shows up. Got it? Um, let's say if I do 10.2 or something, It becomes auto. Because it actually ignores any kind of floating points. So it will now go back to its natural flow, which is green should be first, yellow should be second, red should be third, and then black. Right, so. Um, yeah. So don't use floats. How high can you go with this? You can go as high as high as you you know, it doesn't really matter. It will still work. Um but don't use too high because otherwise you you will you need to remember I would say only use index when you when you have to, right? Um, usually, you want the natural flow to take over, to uh, take care of things. Um, but there are times when you want to do something out of the order. That's when you use the index. Any questions? All right, so a position property, um, display property, z-index, these three are probably one of the most important properties in uh, CSS. If you master these three, then you can pretty much do anything. Uh, everything else is kind of like, and also we looked at the, uh, Response here, right? Add media queries, which also is very important when you do the um, add response. Here. But you don't want, I mean, you know, color, background color, you know, borders, things like that. You can actually um, learn. It's not that complex. Okay. All right, so if you if you guys don't want to have any questions on it, let's move to uh, SAS, okay? And then then we'll move forward after SAS. We'll move forward to more <clears throat> like a flex a flex box, and later on some um, uh, CSS grid, okay? Um, any questions? All right. Okay, how many of you know SAS or less or anything else, you know, stylus or whatever? All right, so I'm assuming that both of you don't know. SAS, okay. Yeah, I have used, but uh, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Uh, so SAS is pretty important when you... Uh, do you know why do, why do we use SAS? First of all, what do you guys know what is SAS and why do we use it? Or preprocessor for that matter. So 
CSS is, I would say, global, right? Um, what does global really mean? So um, when you apply CSS to one element, it can impact its, its children, right? That means global. Um, and depends on what kind of style that you have provided, right? Um, like fonts, by default, it would inher inherit fonts from, so you defined fonts at the top of your root HTML, and then, you know, every page would have the same fonts, right? And you can say, okay, this now, this element can different font, and it would override it, but by default, it would inherit everything, right? Now, um, it also missing something which most of the other programming languages has, which is variables. Um, the only variable sort of thing you have is classes and IDs, or well, classes mostly, and attributes, right? Um, so you can think of classes like an like a variable that has a specific styles and then you can apply it to a, a different elements um, but it's not very dynamic if you want to change it yes you can change the class and it changes everywhere but it's still um, not very very effective right um, so that's why we use SAS and SAS is nothing but a preprocessor uh, what is a preprocessor? So preprocessor is you write in one language and it translates it into or transpile into another language. So like TypeScript is a sort of like a preprocessor, right? You you write your code in TypeScript and it translates into JavaScript. Um, so this is sort of like that. Okay, you write CSS in SAS and it converts into regular CSS that your browser understands. Browser doesn't understand SAS. Uh, there are three competitors. Uh, there is a less and stylus. Uh, but the most popular is SAS. I think most of the people use SAS. Um, so One of the advantages of SAS, okay, if I want to use SAS here in um, the JS fiddle, I think you can use it. I use this SAS here. Yeah. Well, yeah, let, let me use a different one. Um, code pen. I don't know, very slow somehow. Have you guys used Code Pen? All right. Okay, so let's start with variables. So in SAS, so here I can, if I click on a configuration here, there is a, a preprocessor area. I can simply pick SAS. All right. Um, and oh, I don't realize we are out of time, but let's just go maybe 15 minutes and then we'll, we'll stop. Um, so you can toggle back. So right now it says SAS. Right, so if I want to create, let's say, a variable, I would have to use a dollar sign, and I can say my favorite color is red. 
right? Because it can change. Now, um, then I can write my CSS here. Let's say if I have a, if I say all my div should have color red, instead of this, I can use this, my favorite color. So I created a variable that I can use freely as I like. And if I look at the compile CSS, it would ultimately output this. You don't see obviously the variables or anything like that. Right? So if I go view uncompiled, I would see this. Um, so if I have a paragraph, I can use the same variable. And I, for, for this, I can say um, background color is actually my favorite color. Right? And if I look at the compiled CSS, now they both have red. So I can dynamically do that. Um, here, if I change to green, they both would become green, right? All right. So let's say if I have a div high, as you can see, the div is green here. And if I have a paragraph high, its background color is green at the bottom here. Um, so <clears throat> there are some rules we can, because this is like a predefined thing, so you, you don't want to do this. Um, I have to change it to uncompiled and then you don't want to do this because there are predefined values. Think of this way. Anything that is predefined, you don't want to use this. Okay. Um, but let's say if I have some URL, I would have to use the, the quotes. Um, actually, if I want to use less, I'm using SAS right now. Less is not very uh, far away. If I just say Okay, and then there is another extension. You see the SAS and SCSS. So the difference between this two is, um, this used to be in an original format, and there was no, I think semicolons or something. I, I don't remember, but, well, here you need semicolons, obviously, but there was no semicolons here. That's what I remember, or something else, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, th this was in an old format. It's not many people using it. So I would suggest use SCSS extension if you're using SAS. Okay, now let's use less. So less, instead of using dollar sign, you would just simply add. And everything else is pretty much the same. Okay. And if I look at the compiled CSS, it is not much difference. All right. Um, if I'm nesting something, well, you know what? Let's just, uh, I think Sesha has gone because the time is up. So let's just wait for Sesha to move forward. Um, I think we spent like two and a half hours. So I think that should be enough. And we can uh, move forward to SAS, uh, continue with the SAS next uh, lecture. We'll go much uh, in detail. Uh, but any, any questions? All right. So, so SAS, yeah, go ahead. Just for the maintenance, uh, no, for easy maintenance. 
SaaS? So, SaaS? so we use SaaS, uh, you know, for easy maintenance of uh, CSS code, you know, you want to change in uh, any property. Yeah. So we, we change in a single file, stuff changing, you know. Yeah, so it, it allows you to, as I said, I mean, uh, we haven't covered a lot of it, but as you can see, the power of SAS is, um, and we, we can do, we can go further, but the, the power of SAS is because you had, first of all, it has variables, right? So let's say um, if I want to do some pixel calculation, so let's say, some div I should have 10 pixel and inside it should be half of the the border the border should be half of the my button size or something like this right now because you have a variable you can actually get some math so you can actually do math right uh, where I can say my border equals like 10 you know border pixels div uh, is 10 uh, is the button pixel divided by 10 right and so you can do math um, you can do when you do animation it will help you because animation is a lot of math based animation where you don't have to put fixed values uh, you can do inheritance here so like if I have a div inside a paragraph I can say uh, pass this property inside so it will pass a value uh, you can inherit there rather than using the inherit of of each element, right? And we'll, we'll notice, we'll, we'll see more. And in organization, you can actually split files and you can import one file into another. So it has a lot of advantages. If you have a large project and if you're not using SAS, then there is some, you should be because pretty much all the uh, big project using either SAS or less or stylus, one of the preprocessors. Um, because if you otherwise your CSS becomes very difficult to manage. Okay. So you have to have one of the preprocessors. It becomes it makes your life so easier, believe me. Okay. Um so for homework, I would say, please finish the homework from last last time. Um, I will give you homework on, I will give you less homework this week. I'll just give you homework on the, um, the Z-Index. Uh, and then since we just started the SAS, I don't want to give you homework on SAS, but maybe next time. Um, but try to finish in the previous... And I have some, you know, you, you can look at some of my tutorials on <clears throat> React if you if you have st trouble starting. Um, and so we can <clears throat> we can catch up, right? <clears throat> um, as for the next time, um, I want you to since we we covered the um, inheritance this time, let's do. Uh, few things like a call apply and bind which which we haven't covered yet which is very important and then we'll move to um, uh, promises okay which is very important topic okay guys um, if any questions all right Okay, so next, um, so next uh, Saturday, same time. Okay. Thank you, man. All right. All right. Bye.